Yo, what's going on guys? It's not too shoddy. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of the secret formula for how to succeed on wipe day. So first of all, when is the wipe? We don't actually know. We know it's tomorrow, but we don't know what time. By the time you're seeing this video, there's a good chance it's already wiped. Now what all is wiping? Pretty much everything is wiping in the game, except for character names. According to one of the devs on Discord, basically the character names will stay. So, I don't know if you'll log on and you'll have a bunch of reset level 1 characters with the same names that you had them as. I'm assuming that's what it's going to be. But if you have a character name and you're worried somebody else is going to get it, don't worry, because you'll keep it. Other than that, everything else is wiped. So no more items, your stash is gone, your items are gone, your characters are back down to level 1. Um, but you won't have to worry about unlocking classes this time, so you'll have access to all the classes and you'll still have uh, your cosmetics and stuff that you've purchased. But other than that, it's a total wipe. Now I wanna preface this video by saying that most of what I'm gonna talk about is only as it precludes to group play. So if you're a solo, a lot of the information that I'm gonna talk about is maybe not as relevant, but some of it still is. But honestly, if you're solo, I highly recommend you go to the gathering hall and find a group, or you can go on the Dark and Darker Discord and look for a group in the party section. I can't promise you'll find the most competent players that you've ever played with, but it, I, I think it's better than playing solo. Solo play right now is kind of lacking in my opinion. But all right, so when the wipe has just happened and you're logging in to your first raid at level one, what should you, what should you have in your mind? So basically you wanna make sure that you're looting pretty much anything and everything. So don't be afraid to loot white items that you can't use, even maybe gray items. Loot probably every single green you find, even if it's terrible, every piece of treasure. You wanna make sure that when you're leaving, you are filling up your inventory to the brim because you need every single piece of gold you can get. The reason that you need so much gold is because you need potions, because obviously you don't start with potions and potions are very, very vital in the current state of the game. And you also need gear. And you can actually get a lot of upgrades really early on just by simply buying the gray gear from the merchants. I'll also say it's very important that for your first raid, you just mainly focus on trying to escape. The thing is on wipe, Nobody really has any gear on wipe, so there's actually no reason to force yourself into PvP with other players because most of the time they're not going to have anything that you really care about anyways aside from maybe some extra treasure. If you can avoid PvP, it's probably a good idea too, and I wouldn't bother going down to hell with base kit. I would probably try and get at least a green weapon before you do that. Also want to note that you should be looting as many chests as possible, killing as many mobs as possible, and breaking as many pots and boxes and barrels as possible because all of these things will give you XP, which is gonna allow you to level up a lot faster if you're just spam breaking all the boxes and all the pots. You'll also get way more XP whenever you actually make it out. If you die, I think your XP gets something like cut in half. Whereas if you make it out, you get the full amount of XP. So extracting is very, very important, which is why I said you should play a very defensive get out play style. So now you've made it out of your first raid and you've got a little bit of money, maybe like anywhere from 50 to 200 gold in your, in your stash. So what sort of upgrades should you be prioritizing? Well, first of all, I would say if you haven't seen my merchant guide, which most of you probably already have, but if you haven't seen it, it might be worth watching it, but I'll go, I'll give you a quick rundown of it here. Basically, you should be prioritizing a weapon first. So the biggest upgrade you can get by far is going from a starter gray weapon to a white or a green weapon, or even a gray weapon from the vendor. If you look at the gray weapons in the vendor versus the gray weapons on your starter kit you'll notice that they do a lot more damage so getting a better weapon is like easily the number one priority other than that it's a good idea to just scan all the vendors for their greens so most of the vendors will have at least one guaranteed green 
that spawns in their shop and the shops refresh every 30 minutes on the hour 6 a.m 6 30 a.m 7 a.m and every time they refresh they will most of them will have at least one green so check that green see if the stat on it is something that benefits your class and if it is then consider buying it after looking at the price it's almost always going to be worth it you can get a lot of really good early game gear like this another good way of getting decent gear early on is to kill the mini bosses so the skeleton champion and the wraith and the easiest way to kill those is usually to cheese them by getting up on top of something that they can't reach you on and then just headshotting them over and over again and a lot of times skeleton champions and wraiths can have cloaks and a lot of other really high rarity stuff that can be very very nice upgrades the next priority after getting a green weapon should definitely be to buy some potions basically health potions are going to be like the your best friend at the start of the wipe once you've got a decent kit going of like just some gray gloves pants boots and a green weapon and some meds you're gonna wanna look to head down to hell and kill the mini bosses there. So the demon centaur and the demon berserker. The best way to go about killing the hell mini bosses is again to just cheese them. So try and find a place where you can get up on top of something where they can't reach you. There's tons of cheese spots in hell. It's also worth noting that you do have the option of killing the bosses while you're down there in hell, but Keep in mind that in order to do this, you need to probably understand all the boss mechanics as well as having a competent team and ideally having a team that is built towards bossing. So you would really want either a bard or a cleric or both. And then maybe like a ranger is really good as well. If you manage to kill a boss, the bosses will always have at least blue loot and oftentimes purple. Uh, in normal mode and then you also get access to an endless gold hoard that you can sit there and loot until the circle closes in and you can get a lot of money out of the gold hoard too i'd say if you don't know how to kill bosses or you've never done it before really consider watching a guide and maybe having your whole team if you have a group of people you're playing with have them all watch the guide if they haven't done it either really think about trying it because it's a lot of fun it's one of the most fun things in the game in my opinion is killing the bosses and it can be really really rewarding especially if you can get there really early on day one it's also worth noting that you don't need crazy gear it's really about how much damage you can get off and your movement and your mechanics and how well you deal with the boss fight as opposed to your gear so now you've kind of got your start in you've got your foot in the door you're starting to level up. Now, once you hit level 15, you do have the option of going into high roller, though with the current state of high roller, I can't really recommend you actually go into it because the 100 gold entry fee is very steep. And right now high roller is not super rewarding and it's really hard to make back that money and actually profit on high roller especially with all the other teams that are going to be fully kitted and rolling through lobbies there's going to be a lot of streamers and a lot of just absolute gamers in high roller that the average players won't stand any chance against so i can't recommend high roller once you start to get a decent amount of gold built up i do highly recommend you do what i did in early access the first wipe look to buy golden keys so at the beginning of the early access the first wipe golden keys were going anywhere between 300 and 500 gold and i managed to buy up like 10 or 15 of them i think it was 14 of them that i bought and then within a few weeks, they had skyrocketed all the way up to over 1,250 gold, which is the max trade window. They became extremely valuable and I became extremely rich because I'd bought so many of them for so cheap. So consider spending your spare money on golden keys if you're looking to invest for the future. And now I want to talk about the meta. And now I already made a whole video about the meta and what it's looking like is going to be best all that information is still relevant to the wipe it's actually probably even more relevant so if you haven't seen that video i'll give you a quick rundown here basically rangers are very very strong because of all the damage reduction changes and it's really hard to survive multiple shots from a longbow now bards are, are still very strong they've been strong ever since early access started they've been nerfed a few times but 
they're still extremely strong and they're kind of a must have just because they offer movement speed. They offer the ability to open all locked chests, which gives you the lion's head chest and the golden chest, which are very valuable and good to have early on. They also have the shriek of weakness that makes all the PVE enemies considerably easier to kill. This is also very effective for bossing. Bards also have the song of tranquility, which allows you to heal your recoverable health for free constantly. This is extremely valuable because if you don't have a bard, you're gonna have to be sitting down for minutes at a time to get your recoverable health back unless you have bandages. And basically Bard just completely cuts out all that downtime and allows you to stay topped up for almost the entirety of the dungeon. It's extremely valuable early on, especially when you don't have a lot of meds. And Bard is also just incredibly good on wipe because Bard pretty much is at full power from level one. And then we have Clerics. And Clerics, Clerics for a similar reason to Bards are also kind of necessary and extremely extremely good to have on wipe. Reason for this is obvious, it's because they have so many heals and with the recent healing changes making it so that it's really really hard to be full health because healing takes way longer and it's harder to get meds. Clerics being able to just heal you almost for free multiple times throughout the dungeon, very, very strong, especially early on. And clerics kind of have the same thing with Bard where they're very, very strong from level one with no perks and no gear. So bards and clerics both are very non-gear reliant. They're very much close to their full power potential right off the bat, which makes them both kind of must-haves for wipe. So those are the big three, rangers, bards, and clerics. Ideally, you're running both a bard and a cleric, uh, and then you can pretty much flip out whatever third class you want ranger is obviously the ideal choice because rangers are just so strong right now the thing with bard and cleric is that bard can play the song of uh, the corral of clarity to give the cleric all of his spells back over time passively this also makes it so that bard is quite good with wizard so you could actually consider running wizard bard cleric and the bard's just giving the wizard and the cleric all their spells back all the time the only issue with this is that wizard is quite weak after the recent nerfs so just kind Kind of in a bad spot right now but yeah the meta is basically rangers bards and clerics uh you really need a bard and a cleric if you're playing with a team and your team doesn't have a bard you should play bard if it doesn't have a cleric you should play cleric if you're playing by yourself and you don't have a team consider playing rogue and then probably reconsider and actually just play bard or cleric honestly like they're that broken but yeah if you want more in-depth details about the the state of the meta i made a whole video on that so go check that out other than that, uh, just try to have fun. Just play the classes that you really enjoy the most and have the most fun. And ultimately, the success metric is not how much gold you make, but it's how much fun you have. So you can have all the gold in the world, but if you're not having fun, then, you know, what does it matter? And that's about everything. So good luck on the wipe. And if you want to see how my wipe's going, you can come by the stream, twitch.tv slash not too shoddy. I'm going to be streaming probably most of the day on wipe day here in you know i'm assuming it's in about eight hours from now and yeah stop in say hi say what's up that's uh, that's it for me see you on wipe day i'm not too shoddy out